All right, don't mind all the noise. Look at the size of the tree right there that they just took down across the street from my house. They're loading, loading up and a giant tree. Look at that. Oh man, okay. You're gonna hear that in the background. There's no way of getting around it today. So I'm in a shop here and I'm doing a little something something. You know, I'm always looking for that improvement to my situation. And I'm gonna show you a few things that I'm doing here, but let me take a swig of this. Icy, icy cold PBR. Ah, oh, that's almost like heaven on earth. Whew. All right, let me show you something. Okay, we're gonna have intermittent chainsaw sounds and there's no way of getting around it. It is what it is today. I've been dealing, they've been over there with the noise and everything since seven o'clock this morning. Thank God. Well, if I went fishing, I couldn't even have pulled out this morning. Well, I could have way before they got here. All right. Do you notice something? The last time I showed you in here, I had a big cooler sitting there. And you know what? I really, really don't like it. I love having this as my live well. There's my ceramic air stone. There is my oxygen bottle, my regulator. And you know what I've come to realize? This time of year, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm taking kids, kind of tourist people, you know. I went looking for bait on the beach the other day. Didn't find any. Pogies on the beach. Didn't find any. They're so on and off, on and off, on. They're here. They're not here. They're here. They're in 39 foot of water. They're in 68 foot of water. They're in two feet of water. You know, I'm really tired of that. Really tired. And I don't chase mullet around either. Because usually if I go get mullet, I've got to go to a dock or something. I can't chase them around in this boat and throw the net like I do pogies. And the other day, I had a bunch of kids and two women on the boat. And that cooler right there was doing exactly what I always thought it was. It provides a seat, but it also gets in the way. I have ballroom dancing, folks. I got more room than a 30 foot, 30 foot boat, okay? And I wanna keep it that way. So having room or having a big cooler there, and I'll, I'll show you if you're not familiar, the reason I'm running that little cooler is because that's what I just put shrimp in. Okay. Now I was running. Let me get down from here again. I was running this. And what this has, for if you don't know, uh, if, I never, if you're just new to the channel or something, this is a divided ice. I would put shrimp over here. I would put mullet and or pogies or something over here because it's bigger. And then the aerated water would slosh through these holes and go back and forth and aerate both. You know, for the times that I actually get pogies, you know, I mean, I got to throw the net and I'm wasting so much time. I'm wasting time looking, I'm wasting your fishing time. And 
I can tell you honestly, probably 95% of the people that I take don't care and don't know and don't really give a hoot. And if I do go offshore, okay, I'm a cigar minnow troller. That's what I troll. I, I troll cigar minnows, dead cigar minnows. And I'm pretty good at it because I have lots of success with it. Over the years, from cobia to sailfish and 40, 45 pound kingfish, it works for me, okay? So what I'm doing now is I discussed in an earlier video that I wish I had an Australian live well back here and a bait board that was big and you opened up the lid and it was about a 10 gallon live well underneath. That's the way they do it in Australia. They don't got these pogey tanks and all this bullshit. They just take baits and they put them in there. They take their crays, which are lobsters that they catch, uh, like Florida lobsters with no claws. I don't think they have claws. And they put them in there and stuff. So I have this tiny little Camp Zero cooler. And I take shrimp from that larger cooler many times and I dip them up and I put them in, you know, uh, I don't think I got one here to show. You know, Maxwell House blue containers coffee comes in. And I sit that up there. Well, the problem with that many times is it's getting hot. I mean, it's hot now. It's, this is, we're into summer, okay? So what I'm devising is I'm going to use this little cooler and I'm gonna have it up here and I'm gonna put nice cool water in it and I want to be able to use the shrimp out of here. Jigging shrimp, float rig fishing. I am really going to stick to my guns when it comes to inshore fishing, river. I'm gonna continue to float rig fish because you know why? It catches fish. Just got off the phone with a guy who had some kids and I was telling him about float rig fishing. All these kids gotta do is stand here and have the patience to drift that float out and watch that float go down with whatever. Ladyfish, jacks, flounder, trout, red, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I want action for these kids in the summer. Big time action. No long boat rides, okay? So many times I'm doing some shorter trips with these kids. So what I gotta do is the cooler just sits around up here like this. Yeah, it'll be heavier. It'll have some weight in it with water, but I used to have a place to mount a camera right here, right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an old cutting board and I'm gonna fashion a bracket that this goes around and will hold the cooler here for, you know, boat wakes, me moving from spot to spot. And I'll show you that as I'm going along here. So oh, now we got the power company showing up. Oh man. Taking the giant trees down around here is definitely a project from hell and back. So you can kind of get it. This is gonna be the temporary residence for trout as we're using, or for not trout, for, for shrimp as we're using them, but they're living nice and cool in the shade with the pure oxygen that comes out of the bottle at like 55 degrees and my cooler right there with the shrimp in it stays nice and cool. And I don't believe I'm gonna mess with a lot of going after these pogies and wasting that time. We wasted a ton of time just the other morning, going down the beach a mile or two, didn't see nothing. Couldn't throw on the net, throw the net on any bait. Came back to the inlet, tried jigging up 
bait. Nobody was really getting them. There was five boats there, and I saw them catching onesie twosies. Actually watched another guy sit there jigging up bait for damn two hours before he took off and went offshore or something. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Burning up your customer's time while you're supposed to be going fishing, but no, everybody's sitting on his boat looking like, like this, laying back and, you know, drinking beers already at 8 o'clock in the morning because they're so bored, they're waiting to go fishing. Maybe it's just me. I don't like boat riding. I like going fishing. So as I get this project going, I'm building that simple, like, little hook device that I'll show you to hold that cooler in place. Okay, so I have there right there to grab a shrimp out of and keep them nice and cool super healthy and then i'm going to show you a suzuki maintenance issue i'm going to show you a suzuki hidden maintenance issue that even i the owner of a 250 2020 didn't know i was told supposedly but i didn't pay attention but then I was talking to our local mechanic here, and he told me about it. And I'm going to tell you about it. And it's very, very important. So stand by. All right. Now the, mo the noise moved down the street. So it's a little less. But it's just this what I just did here is a simple little thing. Just a tweak, you know. So here you go. This is nothing but... To go around there to uh, hold that cooler up there in case there's wakes or whatever you know just a little extra security and then you just tilt it back tilt it back and pull it up there you go just like that because my shrimp are gonna be hospitalized in that cooler and then they're going TDY in this cooler as we use them keeping them nice and cool that's the objective I'm taking kids a lot and just families they just want to catch some fish you know so no I'm not gonna be running up and down the beach and all this stuff wasting time I'm gonna go and stick to my shrimp guns my float rig guns, and then maybe in July I'll do a little king fishing. But that leads me up to the next thing that you've all been waiting for. 2020 Suzuki outboard, four stroke outboards. I do not know if it's just for like 200s and above. All I can tell you is I've seen it on YouTube where people are dismantling their entire engine from like here down because they can't get the lower unit off. If you don't take your lower unit off every year, it could be more than every year. There was a problem with the Suzuki's where they weren't greased at the factory where you put the lower unit on and the drive shaft goes up into the power head up in here and that would be dry and it would lock on. Orowalk sent me some pictures. He's a outboard mechanic in Long Island, New York, the number one supporter of this channel. And he sent me pictures of what they have to do and then there's videos on YouTube one of them is on a channel called born again boating he's a mechanic not necessarily Suzuki I don't see him ever working hardly on a Suzuki he's all mr. Merck or your Yamaha but he works at a dry storage rack place in the Keys and you get those people in the Keys they just use the shit out of their boat they put it in the dry rack and they go back to new york where they came from and then they come back down and they want to change their water pump 
and he is smashing the lower unit and smashing in here, literally breaking the aluminum casing to get in there to cut the shafts and all the, it's unbelievable. Suzuki knew that there was a little bit of an issue going on there. And what they did, and I just found this really out the other day. Let me get a flashlight. I, you've got all your Zerk grease fittings, all right? And let me turn my flashlight on. And so you get a perspective of the engine. You've got one right here, right? That's for the grease. See the grease right there? Squirting out. That's to fill up this rod all up in here. The steering, the turning. All right, so you got that grease fitting. You've got your grease fittings right here on your, I guess you'd call that. I mean, sorry, I'm not Joe technical here, but that is for your trim and tilt arm in there you got where the engine goes up and down. You've got one right there. You got a grease fitting right up inside there. Okay, so you get an idea of what I'm talking about here. Well, the one that I didn't know anything about, I mean, really, I kind of didn't even know, is up in here, your drive shaft would come straight up, follow the flashlight, would come straight up through here, and you see the grease right there? There is a grease fitting right there right up in there there's a grease fitting and that is to grease the splines on your drive shaft i didn't know about that one i pretty much knew about all the rest in here but that one i didn't know I mean, I was told supposedly, Orowak told me, and he showed me. But see, he sends me so many pictures of destroying these engines to get in there to fix stuff. Oh, my God. Tearing stuff apart. I mean, he's the great fixer. You know, he's the fixer guy. I'm the user guy. So um, I didn't know that one was up in there. So, being that I just turned a year on my engine on May 8th, I got a phobia. So, I can't really handle this lower unit myself. It is a two-man job to take it off, put it on, uh, make sure the shifter rod is going where it needs to be, all that stuff. So, I usually take it to a local guy here. And he said, middle June, he could do my water pump. And he says, has the lower unit been off yet? And I said, no, not, not yet. I mean, it's only a year old. And he says, well, make sure it'll come off. So what I did is I went and loosened all the, the, the nuts on the studs down here. I loosened up all these and the one that's hidden up in here. Okay, there's one under there. And what I did is I loosened it up just enough on both sides, all right? And I shook it a little bit and it started to come, fall off. And then there's alignment pins up in here. Now your engine may not be like mine. This here, from this groove to this groove, that's a spacer. All right, and right here, there was a big space and then there was a little space here because I backed these off that much so the whole lower unit would kind of drop down a little bit. And then I took, because I always use it for everything, Marvel's mystery oil, I took it in a 
in a squirt, you know, a oil can, and I doused inside there on those pins because the pins can get stuck. The drive shaft can get stuck. So until I can have him professionally pull the lower unit off, change the water pump and put it back on. So there you go. Do not wait years to do your lower unit or do your uh, water pump. But here's what Mike, the guy I was talking to as a mechanic here, said to me. He said, 99% of the time, your water pump, there's not a big issue with it. The issue is you wait too long and you've got that on there, on there and you've never had the lower unit off. He says, that's the problem. We can't get to your water pump. We can't get to it because we can't get your lower unit off. And he says, things start to get real expensive at that point. Then he pointed to the boat ramp and he says, there's at least 25 outboards out there that I know of right now that the lower unit will not come off. And I told him, run it until the water pump burns up. And then you're going to have one hell of an issue. So it's kind of, it's like other things, dipping in and out of salt water and stuff. You must make sure that lower unit comes off. Well, Suzuki put that little Zerk fitting up in there for that purpose. I ran home, dropped the lower unit a little bit, and I greased the living hell out of that because I got a phobia about stuff like that. So there is something that if you didn't know, that little baby is tucked up in there. I'll show it to you again with my flashlight. It's one of those little things that if you don't know what's there, you're never gonna see it, all right? I'm showing it to you right now. You go up in here, here's your Tupperware for your midsection. And there's your steering arm. And then right up in there, you can see there's your like uh, shift shaft right there. And right on the side of it, up in there, they put a grease fitting. Now, I'll throw in a couple pictures of what Orawalk sent me. That's just your little tip. I don't have much else to report except constant improvements and fine tuning my system on the Jetty Wolf and little things like that that I learn. So I'm passing it on to you. So I'm sure this video is way too long by now. So I'll bid you farewell and have a PBR on me.